Hello everybody, my name is Marlow and welcome back once again to the hardcore world. I hope you guys are doing very well today. I myself am feeling super duper excited for what we're going to be building later on in the episode today, which if you saw the thumbnail of this video, you probably got a pretty good inclination of what it's going to look like. <laughs> and you can probably tell from that picture, it's a pretty tall building, like really tall. So tall that if I fell off whilst building it right now, I would most certainly die. Which, believe it or not, I don't really want that to happen, <laughs> seeing as this is a hardcore world. So, I did try my best to actually get the Feather Falling in Chan in between episodes. As you can see, I got a really high amount of levels, at least for episode 3, I would say anyway. And all of my armor and my tools are fully enchanted. Uh, not to the best they possibly could be, but enough at the moment. But yeah, wasn't able to get Feather Falling 4, but we do have 43 levels, so I thought, hey, just to kick off the episode here, why don't we head down to our enchanting room and see if we can get lucky. I'm breaking three. What's it gonna give us? Just I'm breaking three. Second attempt. Here we go. Fire protection. I I don't want that either way. So let's see what else. What do we have on the books? Loyalty. The axe. Efficiency five. Sure. We'll, we'll get another diamond axe. That is an improvement <laughs> for sure. Amazing. That's even better. Protection three book or. Depth Strider 3 Boots. I think a Protection 3 Book could actually be pretty helpful because I could stick that on my helmet and get Protection 4. So yeah, I say let's do that. And I'm breaking 3 as well. That's a solid book. I'm happy with that one. We got Fire Protection again on the boots. I, I still don't really want that. I, I definitely need protection alongside Feather Falling, so that's not going to work. But I will take an Efficiency 3 Book. And for the last enchantment, for until now anyway, uh, until later that is, we can get... Blast protection, which I, I don't want. So let's get another book. Luck of the sea. I'll I'll take it. Why not? <laughs> now you're probably wondering just how I got all of those levels. Bearing in mind in the last episode, I was really struggling to get XP. And what I actually did, and I don't generally know why I didn't do this last episode. It would have been so much quicker. <laughs> but we found a skeleton spawner in the first episode. And pretty much I've just very basically converted that into a grinder. I'm just struggling to find the entrance at the moment. We will be remedying that later on. It's going to be a lot easier to find once we've built what we're going to be building today. I can assure you that. But there should be a cobblestone pillar around here somewhere. I just came back to base quickly because I've been looking for an excuse to make one of these pretty much since we started and it's not really expensive. I don't know why it's taken me so long, but let's make a spyglass and see if we can see it that way. Okay, I haven't actually used one of these in 1.17, so I'm super excited. And yes, I know I have Optifine, but still, I want the spyglass. Oh, that's nice. Oh my goodness, that really zooms in far. Can we use Optifine at the same time? Holy moly, <laughs> we can. Oh my goodness, I've got like a, a telescope on me here. This is, I've basically got the Hubble telescope, telescope is what it feels like, how far I'm zoomed in. Okay, Optifine is actually a little bit too much, but that's really cool. I love that noise too. Super nice. It's not, however, proving very helpful in finding my pillar. <laughs> I have marked down the coordinates, so I could probably just check that, but hey, I'm having fun zooming in with this thing. Okay, this is a little bit embarrassing. I went to the wrong forest biome. <laughs> I had to check my coordinates. I've been looking for far too long. I need to get started on the episode. It should be just over this way which is just right by our sugarcane lake. And as you can see, I, I don't even need the spyglass to find it. It's right over there. So as I said, this is a super duper basic farm at the moment. But let's get down to the bottom first of all. Where I can show you it in action and you should be able to hear some skeletons and you can probably still see some loot on the floor. Yeah, I've literally set up the very basics. The spawner is about, I don't know, 12 blocks in that direction <laughs> and all they do is come to the end of the room, drop down here. I would like to add in some sort of bubble elevator so we can get them down to one hit kill if they don't have armor on. So yeah, to do that, I need some soul sand and you'll never guess what. I don't have any, so once again we have to take another trip to the nether. I, I really don't want to, but we gotta do it. 
So to find some soul sand naturally generating in the nether, I would probably have to make my way out of this basalt deltas biome, which, as we found out last episode, is not the easiest thing to do in the world. <laughs> so what we're actually going to do is just drop down to the nether fortress that we found also in the last episode and hope to get it that way. And we can also, you know, get some nether wart as well because it will be spawning on top of it. And yeah, I just think it's going to be easier, maybe not as safe, but it's, it's certainly going to be quicker than looking for it naturally generating. Well, boy, do I take that back. <laughs> Let's get out of the nether biome, or not the nether biome, the, the nether fortress real quick and go grab it from there instead. I'm going to grab a whole bunch of this because I really don't want to come back to the nether if I don't have to. May as well grab a little bit of soul soil too. We're also going to need some kelp to make the water in the bubble column into water sources, so I'm currently just on my way to the nearest ocean biome. Which, by the way, is not close at all, like most things in this world, it seems. Um, okay, yeah, that is perfectly normal Minecraft behavior. I was just about to head home after getting enough kelp, I didn't really need too much, but then I spotted this shipwreck off in the distance, and you can actually get moss blocks from a shipwreck, so I'm really hoping we can find one of these on board. So let's see what treasures behold this ship, but first of all, let's get a gasp of air. I, I still don't have respiration. <laughs> Not really used to that sort of thing. In this chest, we have some books and a treasure map sure i'll take that in this chest we have moss oh yes we finally got it okay that's amazing Let, let's get some air let's get some air and we can look in the third chest still oh that's so awesome is is this stuff rare like was that an easy find or have i just got really really lucky there you guys can let me know down in the comments and one final chest over here and we got a whole bunch of goodies i will take just all of this thank you very much <laughs> So moss, if you don't know, is an amazing block, one of the new ones in the update, and it's definitely a personal favourite of mine, and I'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about it, but I don't really have time today, we got too much to do, so maybe next episode we can do some stuff with the wonderful and brand new moss block. Oh yes, one hit kill, that is what we like to see, ladies and gentlemen. So yes, we have the bubble column up and in position, the skeletons are flowing into it nicely, and I think my AFK spot around here is close enough so the skeletons still spawn, but far enough away so that more can still spawn, if that makes sense. I don't know, I, I think I made a skeleton farm, which is fine. <laughs> it all works. However, it doesn't look very nice, does it? So I could stop here, but I think we both know I'm not going to. Cue the building montage. So there we go everybody, that is the room complete, for the most part. There's a couple of things left to do, like at some point I would like to get an ender chest over here instead of some regular chests and I still got to do some better entrances and exits using some bubble beaters and water drops and yeah that's about it and how how nice do these amethyst blocks look <laughs> i am in love with using these at the moment and you will see that even more so in a little bit when we head up to the surface but yeah we have set up 
up a bit of a sorting system, or I shouldn't call it a sorting system because nothing's actually being sorted, but a storage system where all of the drops go. I did try to make it a sorting system, but there's just no room behind there. Like, behind that wall is literally the skeleton spawner, so this is going to have to do, but that's okay. And yeah, this is the room, and what I'm going to do now is just AFK here for a little while and see if I can finally get some feather falling boots and then we can start building on the surface. Oh yes, that did not take too long at all. So we can go ahead and slap that on our boots already. I've got this covered up because I was scared a creeper was going to somehow climb down the ladder. It didn't, as you probably would have guessed. But we can go ahead and put that on the boots. What's going to be cheaper this way round? So there we are. That's pretty much maxed out aside from mending, which I can actually pretty easily get. All I got to do is take a trip back to the village. Something very satisfying is coming up in three, two, one. You know, that would have been a lot more satisfying if we could have followed it up with the soul sand elevator. So let's chuck that in, hop in the stream, and we should collect just a stack of kelp at the top. And yes, we do. There we are, completed the stack. <laughs> so that very nicely takes us back up to the surface. And we got our water drop here to go all the way down. And yeah, come back up once we're done. So now that we have Feather Falling 4, which will save us if save us if we happen to plummet off the top of what we're about to build, I guess we are now ready to actually start building it. So Pretty much the gist of it is we're going to be building a big old tower. Something that says, hey, look at me over here. I'm where the skeleton spawner is, <laughs> which is what the cobblestone pillar is doing at the moment. But we need something a bit more extravagant, shall we say. This may just about be my favourite standalone build I've ever made in this game. And I don't say that lightly because there's a lot of builds I've done in the past I'm really proud of. But this one I am especially in love with. <laughs> it's taken me, as you can probably imagine, a very long time to construct. Not to mention the planning time as well as all of the resource gathering. None of which you wanted to nor needed to see, believe you me. I've been at it for a while here. But all in all, I am super duper happy with how this tower has turned out. And to be honest with you guys, towers are something I always struggle with in this game. I can never just seem to get the shape of it right. I always fall behind on that. I can just about do everything else, but making it look like a tower, <laughs> it sounds a bit silly, but I, I always struggle with it. And I think considering the gargantuan size of this build, I've done a pretty decent job. And it, it wasn't meant to quite be this size. My original intention was to do something a lot smaller, but I kind of just got carried away. And well, we've ended up with this, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. We definitely have quite a good view from the top of here. I can see a lot of my surroundings, which is awesome. Unfortunately, there isn't really much to look at at the moment other than my sugarcane field or lake over there, I should say, as well as my house. We can actually see from here, which is pretty awesome. I do want to go and stand on the top of our miniature tower there and see what it looks like from that point of view, as well as my giant mega spruce tree. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty cool vantage point up here. And I have done some work on the interior literally just the bare minimum I've pretty much made a roof or a ceiling and a floor for each level so we have the top one up here another one there with the balcony a smaller one here and then another one and lastly the bottom floor so I don't really know what else to put inside of them I, I hear a wandering trader I think yes there he is around there um so I need your ideas, guys. What could go on each of these levels? I was thinking maybe something to do with brewing could be pretty cool. But yeah, I'm open to any sort of suggestions. So please do let me know down in the comments what we should actually build inside of this tower here. 
Okay, we gotta check it out. What does it look like from our starter house here? Let's head up the ladder onto the top of this much tinier tower and which direction is it in? I think I found it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that looks awesome. Can we see it well with the spyglass? Oh yes, we can. It like frames it perfectly. Oh my goodness, look at that. I am so very happy with it. We can actually get a bit of a better look at the build. So you can see how I've used some of the amethysts and maybe we should just go F1 for this. Doesn't make a whole lot clearer. <laughs> so we've got it on the roof obviously which looks uh, spectacular if I do say so myself but apart from that we've kind of got it just on like small detail parts which I think looks really cool. As you can see down the bottom here if we double zoom in we got it using some slabs and stairs just kind of peeking through. I am loving the amethyst block. I think I've place down nearly 600 of these <laughs> for this build. Oh, and at the very highest points, you can also see I've got a lightning rod. So if lightning does strike, it's not going to burn the whole thing down. So to get all of the amethyst blocks needed for that tower build, I primarily just did some caving underground and got lucky and stumbled across some amethyst geodes and scraped them clean, pretty much. <laughs> but I did get even luckier and find one right next to my base here, just down this staircase. As you can see, this one has been well and truly wiped clean and it's just the... Uh, budding amethyst blocks I think they're called. So I found this because I was walking down the staircase and I heard a zombie growling and what I'm trying to do is just light up all of the caves around here so that if we ever want to build a mob farm maybe we're already going to have some good rates and I won't have to do a lot of caving and lighting up. So I was digging around looking for this zombie and I stumbled across this thing, which is just awesome. So to get up the uh, excess amethyst I needed, I was basically just harvesting the shards here, as you can see, and then crafting them into the full blocks. So we've got a little bit of time left in today's episode, and I think I would like to spend it getting some more mending books. Now, I've already got four in here, as you can see, and that's because in between episodes I went over to the village and did a little bit more trading, but I would kind of like to get mending on everything, and I still need two more for my axe and shovel here. So let's very quickly head over to our mending villager and see if we can get ourselves two more books. Gonna need to grab two of these though, let's not make that mistake. Until we get ourselves an elytra, which probably isn't going to be anytime soon, I'm thinking I should maybe get myself a horse to travel around on, because at the moment I'm just running everywhere like a chump and it's taking ages, so maybe next episode we can find ourselves a speedy horse. Several hours later, that's a slight overstatement, but we have arrived at the village just in time for them to go to bed, but <laughs> you saw a few Fletchers running around here, and that's basically what I've been doing, just trading with the these guys as you can see hello friend uh, can I just open your inventory they have a stick trade so I've been doing some deforestation trading in some sticks for some emeralds and then going over to our mending villager who is inside of that house So there we go everybody, I am all mended up, my base items and my gear have mending on, I will probably get some other tools at another point in time and put mending on that too, but for right now, this is more than good. And that to everybody is where we're going to have to call it for today's episode. I'm thinking next time round, we definitely need to do something with our storage, because right now, I'm really running out of items in my little base over there, so we definitely need to upgrade that next episode, and I'm also thinking maybe we can do something fun with the axolotls. That sounds like a good time, doesn't it? So I hope you're looking forward to that one, and thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really hope you did enjoy, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.